It is the touchline here on Y254. Beautiful Saturday afternoon when we talk matter sports. And now we turn our attention to boxing in the year 2023 and how it has been going on for Kenya and all around the world because the events of boxing are also happening. Joining me to discuss boxing as a sports journalist, a passionate man when it comes to boxing, who has covered the Kenyan hit squad boxing time and it has been a great experience for him. Duncan Kuria is the name. Duncan, mm -hmm. welcome to the Touchline Y254. Thank you very much. It's been a minute, man. Yeah, it's been a while. Eh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, uh, yeah. the, the invitations are not coming. I'm wondering <laughs> why. <laughs> <laughs> the invitations, you are all around the world. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, we've been, uh, we've been moving a bit. Yes. Uh, the, the international calendar has been so busy. Uh -huh. So we're trying to go off with it. Yes. So probably that's why we've not had time to discuss. Yeah. Finally, you are here and uh, let's kick off with the uh, hit squad. Uh, you were uh, almost uh, two for 10 to 12 days in uh, Cuba for hit squad training. How was it there for hit squad? Yeah, that was a dream come true. Uh -huh, yes. For each and every member of the national team, Yes. including officials. Uh -huh. uh, we've always, like personally, me, yeah. uh, when I was young, <laughs> there is one of our uh, former national champion then. <coughs> he was called the late Don Juan Ena. He's now the deceased. Yes. He gave me a shot, mm. Cuba. Uh -huh, yes. And it inspired me uh -huh. to become the star that I was. Uh -huh. I was able to get to national team because of that inspiration. Yeah. But during those times, even when I was playing, I never dreamt that I'll go to Cuba. Mm -hmm. So I would like to congratulate uh, Waziri Ababu Namwamba. Yeah. He was able to activate uh, an agreement that had been signed between Kenya and Cuba mm -hmm. uh, to have a state program. Oh, okay. and that's what we used to go for the training that we went in Cuba. Yes. And it's a wonderful place. Mm -hmm. uh, the structure they have are very different to what we have here. Yeah. And again, we got a privilege that uh, I think you're one of the few teams that have visited Cuba and mm -hmm. trained with yes. their national team, the top mm -hmm. team. Yeah. You know, sometimes other teams go there and you, are go, you go and just do uh, training sessions with yeah. subclubs. Mm -hmm. But this time around, you are lucky enough that uh, we went there and you are able to interact with the national team, both yeah. for men and women. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, uh, they have a gym which is very, fa very yeah. famous, Be known as Afinka. Before we talk about that, you have talked about uh, the agreement yes. that was signed between. How did the, the agreement come about? The agreement was signed during the time of uh, Waziri Echesa. Ah, uh -huh. wow. Yes, yes. but uh, unfortunately it was not activated uh -huh. until now when uh, Ababu came, came in. Yeah. And uh, he was able to work mm -hmm. with uh, his office and activate that yes. arrangement. And uh, we, are, we, are, we were lucky that mm -hmm. it came during the time when we were preparing for the Olympic qualifiers. Yes. Even though the time that went there was quite short, yes. but it was very impactful and we learned a lot. And it's, uh, I wish we could get some more time yeah. and take a team that is a bit younger. Yes. Because I'm, when you look at our team, yeah. some of our members of the national team are aging are maybe past 30. Mm -hmm. And I think if we are able to go there with guys who are much younger and people who are younger, they will learn a lot and they will become great champions in future because we have seen what they are doing and they were very friendly to us. So the agreement is not a one-off thing? Something no, it's one-off. It's continuous. It's continuous. It will continue. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. From time to time, they expect us uh, to go there. We are also able to maybe ask them to come, come over yes. and help us in developing talent here locally. Mm. So it's a good arrangement that we have with one of the top boxing nations in the world. And uh, there are so many lessons that we yes. can take from them, uh -huh. especially the tractors that they have. Uh, when you go for training there, it's so different from what we have here. Yeah. They don't train for so many hours. Mm -hmm. Like us here, sometimes we go for training session, we start at 9, yes. we, uh, we finish at about 1. Uh, there are 2 hours maximum. If you go for 2 hours, it's very long for them. Mm -hmm. One and a half hours and they're through and uh -huh. they have done everything. When it comes to sparring, they're able to do some innovation. They have so many rings. Mm -hmm. uh, within and the facility. With La Finca. La Finca. <laughs> yeah, and yes. La Finca is so special. Yes. Uh, I don't know, probably because it has produced so many champions. Uh -huh. Uh, because uh, I think most, most of the world champions, Olympic champions, have gone to train. Uh, they gym. come through that gym, and uh, actually, it's uh, like a complex because yeah. they live they live there. They live okay. in the gym. Yeah. Yeah. So La Finca like is a, it's a big compound, yes. about uh, ten acres. Uh -huh. uh, the boxers live within. They have hostel there, mm -hmm. and there are apartments. The guys who are world champions, they have their private rooms. <laughs> Special. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And the ones who have joined the national team and they haven't made a name for themselves, they have dormitories where they share together with others. So it's a, bit, it's a very special arrangement. And uh, when you go there and you see the champions, that are there, the likes of Julio De La Cruz, mm -hmm. and he's very humble, five-time world champion, two-time yes. Olympic champion. Mm -hmm. And he interacts with them just like any other person. You yeah. did know that uh, He's the biggest name in boxing in the world at the moment. Yes. Uh, but they are so humble. Uh, I think 
what they have somehow there's some form of intoxication in them ah. i think from uh, the time of fidel castro yes so they take it like they're fighting for the country mm -hmm. and uh, every time we are going for training uh, we meet they parade mm -hmm. then the captain goes to the end and ask them in spanish if mm -hmm. they are ready for training yeah. then everybody they stay for about five seconds and then everybody says we are ready for training like a military yeah it's like a, yeah that's how <laughs> it's operating yeah. so yeah. Yeah. we are getting a base there yeah. trying to learn what is it what is yeah. it they're asking about now with your language barrier yeah we don't understand what exactly they're asking mm -hmm. so later on when you go off the men national team and women national team don't train together yes so the women train in a different gym mm -hmm. called pan americana and uh, the men are in la finca mm -hmm. so what happened was uh, our our women team used to go for training in the morning yes. to train with women national team mm -hmm. And our men go in the afternoon to train with the men national team. Wow. So what were the key differences that uh, now brought those key lessons to the Kenyan team? Uh, I think one of the main, the, what the biggest difference saw was that uh, the team stay together. Yeah. They have a team they have selected, which stays in camp. A team of about 30 people, mm -hmm. 30, 40. Yeah. So when they have a championship, they reduce the numbers. Mm -hmm. But uh, typically the national team has about 30 members. Yeah. Uh, and these 30 members are in camp. Uh, they stay there, they feed there, and yeah. I think they earn something from the government, mm -hmm. right from where they are. Yeah. And then uh, they have, uh, you see now even in terms of gym, yeah. the gym where we train has three boxing rings. Mm -hmm. And uh, they also, they, how they, 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 they have the hall itself has been made, yeah. it's like the surface has been padded. Yes. Uh, where in, in the sense that even the se all sections of the gym can yeah. be used as a ring. Yes. And when it comes to the time of starting, they do so there are innovations where they have ropes which are uh, go get attached to the ring so you create different rings mm. all across the gym yeah. such that when you're doing sparring everybody's mm. doing sparring at the same at time the same t wow here in kenya yeah. we have a uh, sparring session where two people are fighting mm -hmm. because we only have one ring yes so it's only two so you're waiting for all mm. of them to be able to compete you spend yeah. so much time mm -hmm. but there what's happening was uh we agree when we come in we are doing six rounds yes so these six rounds, it means we're going to do sparring with six different people. Ah. So we'll just be moving from one ring to the other. Yes. That wow. was very different. I had never yeah. seen that before. Yeah. And it comes to punching bag, they have about more than 20 yes. punching bags. So everybody is doing punching bag at the same, same time. time. Uh, we have speed balls mm -hmm. and all that. So you see the investment that has been done there yeah. is massive. Mm -hmm. And uh, it doesn't uh, go without saying that's yeah. why they have achieved so much success. Yes. And I think they, it also becomes repetitive because mm -hmm. When you have this structure where you have youth boxing, because we also met the youth boxing yes. team, mm -hmm. and apparently <laughs> it's like where, where they come, mm. they thought a school. Uh -huh. So these guys attend uh, classes, classes and training is part of school. Yes. Oh, so, so like, like, like when we were there, yeah. we are told that uh, they had gone for a break. Uh -huh. Now schools reopened when we were there, yes. and now the youth team came. Mm -hmm. We are told these guys are from home, so they wouldn't participate in sparring because they will just come back. Yeah. So now school has opened, now they come to the camp where the, the boats are, uh, where Americana is, the Pan American style, yes. where that's where the girls team is. So that's where the school is. Mm -hmm. uh, the boxers attend schools there and do training there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this culture of training the champions and the youth team yes. together, and then now when they become of age, they go to La Finca. Mm -hmm. I think I uh, see that something in them. brings something Yes, different. it inspires them yeah. very differently. And uh, you can easily see why every year they're producing guys who are becoming champions. Yeah. Because you're learning from the best, uh, living with them, seeing yeah. what they do and trying so in the process you become good well you talked about uh, a la it was a learning experience for everybody for the boxers for what about the administration administratively what did you learn from them uh, there's also a lot <laughs> there's a lot also we learn administratively yeah. uh how 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 they have invested mm -hmm. in terms of uh, if it's technology in terms of equipment although some some look very basic yeah. but uh, they have different compartments like for them, okay, me, I was trying to study them and yeah. uh, document what they have. Yes. And uh, they do a lot of coordination sessions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, they have a different room where they go and do that. Okay, just within La Finca. Yeah. Uh, they have, like, the main team has two doctors who mm -hmm. live with the team in the yes. camp. And uh, when they have, uh, when they, after they have done the sparring, <laughs> they used to sneak out of the gym and we, we wonder where they have gone. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> then we followed them and find, found they were going to do coordination sessions. Mm -hmm. And some of our books are also benefited from that. You go and those, the coordination sessions, they were telling me that's the key secret of what made them to be what they are. Yeah. Uh, because they are very intensive and uh, they are, they, the mobility that you see them do in the ring yes. is something that they also practice mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. Though now, to me, I was forward to them because now I was trying to record everything that they're doing so that yes. uh, when I come back, 
have the information of exactly what they do yeah. and uh, how they do it. So the coaches were very good to me. Okay, I've, I'm known to them. They are my yes. friends. Uh, mm -hmm. We take each other as brothers. Yeah. And they were very happy to have me around. Mm -hmm. I helped them a lot in terms of uh, shooting, the bouts. I had a lot of their stuff. Mm -hmm. So they gave me access to all the areas that uh, they have. So in terms of administration, you see how the leadership has provided for even administrators. They're given offices within La Fica. Uh, yes. Uh, they ensure that uh, there's somebody who makes food for them. Mm -hmm. They ensure they have doctors, yes. they have physios, mm -hmm. and they are different coaches. Yeah. So the coach just supervises what mm -hmm. these other coaches are doing. doing. He, he, you might think he's a very idle person because yeah. he just comes there, stands, observes, mm -hmm. and he does nothing. Yeah. But the coaches are very busy mm -hmm. trying to work with the boxers, see how they can help them improve from, yeah. from time to time. Uh, with our, even with our, we, I think we broke protocol. Well, at some yes. point, we managed to get our girls to go and train in La Finca, uh -huh. and they trained with the, with the men, yeah. doing sparring with them. Uh -huh. uh, and they were very <laughs> the girls' kids are very humble. Yeah. You know how during our sparring sessions here, sometimes the men give the girls a very tough time. Yes. They are, you know, they are, they are, their training is not about trying to knock somebody out. It's uh -huh. so technical. It's just yes. trying to learn. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. They don't, uh, somebody doesn't, doesn't come trying to display power. It's, it's, how they it's not a fight. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. More very technical. Yeah. Just trying to outscore you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, if it's movement, so, you know, some of our girls are getting frustrated because mm -hmm. somebody is just holding you, moving about you, you yes. know, it's like you're chasing a, a moving target. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just a wonderful sight to be to see. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we, uh, as a country, we are privileged to have such uh, an opportunity. Yeah. But I'm um, thinking it will be more useful to those who are there. Yeah. It inspired them to improve themselves individually because this boxing is an individual sport. Yes. Uh, I think going forward, we have a wonderful opportunity that we can explore of having to go for training sessions yeah. in their place. And that way, I think it will, it will take as long as uh, it might to yeah. be able to see ourselves producing champions who can be able to conquer the world. The uh, thing is, uh, now after Cuba, direct to Dakar yeah. for the Olympic uh, qualifiers. I think we made it to the semifinals with yes. Elizabeth and Diego. Yes. Uh, the question would be, when you looked at our uh, boxers now after the training in Cuba and now going for the Olympic qualifiers, when they put what they learned in Cuba into play, how did you see the results from them? Yeah, uh, first, <coughs> when you consider the overall uh, performance in terms of the qualification, yes. It might not uh, show the exact output that mm -hmm. we got out of the training in Cuba. But uh, the, the first few days, in fact, it was so like the first bout mm -hmm. that we had in uh, Dakar yeah. was for our captain, Boniface yes. Mugunde, mm -hmm. fighting against uh, 2016 Olympic bronze medalist and 2015 world champion Mohamed Rabi mm -hmm. of Morocco. Yes. And uh, Mugunde knocked Rabi out oh. in the second round, mm -hmm. which was an amazing performance. And immediately but after that bout, the coaches, <laughs> the coaches from Nigeria, South Africa, everything you know, changed. telling me, Cuba yeah. is working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah it yes. was such yeah. a great, uh, it was a great momentum that yes. we got uh, uh -huh. out of that. Because everybody now was thinking about Cuba. Yes. Uh, that is a difference with the case yeah, team because now, uh, Rabi, Rabi, Rabi is the Africa champion. That's yeah. the other day, three weeks before, yeah. we were in Africa championship and it took all uh -huh, in middleweight. Yes. Yeah. So it was expected that Rabi was going to win against Mugunde, yes. uh, who in uh, Africa Championship d uh, got a bronze medal. Mm -hmm. So when we got to Dakar, it was obviously Mugunde was an underdog. Yes. But when he knocked uh, Rabi out, then we thought everybody there was surprised yes. by the performance. Uh, and then I think that first day we got, uh, we, got, we, got we had four bouts, we won three, uh -huh. and lost one, yes. which was wonderful. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, fights, the fights were very tough. I, I think the performance of most of the guys was commendable. Yes. Uh, the tickets were very few. Oh. And it's something I had uh, highlighted before. Yeah. Because uh, the quarters that were given to Africa are very limiting indeed. And I had an opportunity to discuss even with the leadership of uh, uh, boxing unit, mm -hmm. who are the organizers of the Olympic qualifiers. Yes. And they, were, they agreed with me, even though they were also trying to paint a picture that uh, the number of boxers in the Olympic have been reduced. Yeah. by 40. Mm -hmm. So we are going to have less 40. Last time we had uh, about uh, 286 boxers in uh, Tokyo okay, Olympics. Yes. But this time around we are going to have 248. And Africa and will be taking how many now? Now for, <laughs> for the Africa Olympic qualifier, yes. the entire continent was given 18 slots. Wow. 
So for men... And those are considered as men and women now. No, it's separate. Yes. For men, it was only gold. Gold. So only seven men have qualified so far. Mm -hmm. And for women, it's 11. Yes. And for women, uh, it was uh, gold and silver mm -hmm. in the first five weights, yeah. which is uh, flyweight, bantam, feather, lightweight, and welter. Mm -hmm. And in middleweight, mm -hmm. where our uh, Andego is, yes. they, they only needed gold medalists only. Wow. And uh, unfortunately, Andego was fighting again as heavyweight champion of the world, from Mad Morocco. Khadija from Morocco. Yeah. Uh, and Khadija won on points. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was a bit unfortunate for us because at least by now, <coughs> considering in all other ways, uh, the finalists were qualifying. Yes. For Andigo, it was a bit unfortunate that she was not able to qualify. She, uh, she'll have to go for the reaper charges that are coming. Yes. So Africa in general was given 18 slots. Yeah. Uh, that for men, 7. Mm -hmm. For women, 11. 11. Uh, how, how, when you look at that, considering 54 countries yes. to select 7 men, <laughs> How tough does that look? Because I seven men out of because now every country is sending <laughs> boxers you, it's a to their car. <laughs> it's a disaster. <laughs> and I was I was trying to explain to yes. the guy in charge of uh, boxing unit yeah. how difficult it is. Uh, mm -hmm. Even though he was trying now also to convince me that uh, yeah. the chances have been reduced for all, but I, I don't think it's true because now like for Europe, where we are qualifying one person, person. in Africa, mm -hmm. in Europe it's four. Uh -huh. no, so you see, for difference. Europe, it's gold, yeah, silver, so and two bronze medals are yes. qualifying mm -hmm. in most of the weights. Where Africa is just taking out gold, gold medals medal only. Yeah. So you find uh, Europe and America's yeah. Croatia, mm -hmm. they have an edge because uh -huh. they'll be having more. Yes. Uh, probably what will happen is that uh, in this uh, Paris Olympic Games, we are going to have the least number of Africans. Mm -hmm. uh, if what we have seen so far is anything to go by. Because considering last time round, we were qualifying... Uh, Gold, silver, and bronze. bronze. Uh -huh. So at three least three. Per bout. Yeah. yeah. Now it has changed. With only one, I think numbers are going to be much fewer. Yeah. Even though, where I think uh, Africa is going to have a good chance mm -hmm. is in the World Olympic Qualifier Two. Two. Okay. Uh, World Olympic Qualifier One is mm -hmm. going to be tricky, even mm -hmm. though we still have a chance there because yeah. in the World Qualifier, mm -hmm. with the two World Qualifiers, uh, the first one has 49 slots. Mm -hmm. The second one has 51. So it means. Uh, for Africans who are going to participate in the World Olympic Qualifier 1, uh, there will be four medals to be won. Uh, yes. The tricky bit about uh, World Qualifier 1 is, we suspect, <laughs> Russia did not participate in the European Olympic Qualifiers. Well, yes. So most likely, they will go to the World Olympic Qualifier 1. one. And they will come with they, a strong team. Yeah, it's a very strong team. Yeah. It's one of the top boxing nations in the world. Yeah. So if Russia participates in the World uh, Olympic Qualifier, because they have not gotten any tickets so far, yes. they'll try to get those tickets in the World Olymp Olympic Qualifier 1, mm -hmm. which will happen in the month of February from 29th to the 12th yes. March. So I'm thinking that will be a bit competitive. Mm -hmm. But now going into World Qualifier 2, uh, where you know the top guys from Europe, top guys from America, top guys from Asia are already out. Yes. So I'm thinking that is where Africa is more likely to shine. Mm -hmm. Because for Africa, you see now, being that it's that the top guy that has, been, has gotten a ticket. Yes. So all the other guys from rank two up maybe to six, eight, they are potential candidates to get those medals. And that's where I think most of the Africans might get a chance. We might qualify mm -hmm. more Africans in the world qualifier yes. too than we did during our Africa continental mm -hmm. qualifiers. qualifiers. Yes. Because now for the Africa continental qualifiers, they went also for, they just won the 18 places. Yes. That makes it tough for us. Now, giving us a chance through the repertages of World Qualifier 1 and 2, our chances there might be good. Yes, our chances are, I think our chances are good. Yeah. Uh, because like uh, for the qualifiers that we just had, we had uh, six boxers in the quarterfinals. Uh -huh. yeah. Even though in some of the bouts, uh, we had some question about uh, officiating also. Yes. Uh -huh. Because like for a bout that involved Boniface Mugunde, mm -hmm. Uh, I don't understand how the referees never gave any count. Mm -hmm. Yet Mogunde delivered some serious head punches to the boxer from uh, Lesotho. Mm -hmm. It's called Michael Arena Pakela. Mm -hmm. And the referee never gave any count. Yes. Yet in some of the, the bouts, we could see even a jab, somebody mm -hmm. getting hit yeah. by a jab on the head, and yeah. the referees are giving a count. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, also, uh, w w one of the observations that you could see is that for most boxers, when you get a count, it's like you have lost that round. Uh -huh. Ideally, that should not be the case. Yes. Because when you when you hit by a punch, mm -hmm. the referee gives you a count to give you time to recover mm -hmm. from the effects of that punch. Yes. But it doesn't mean that you have lost a round. Mm -hmm. So it's easy for somebody even maybe to be hit by a punch and you go down. We call it a knockdown. Yeah. And then you come mm -hmm. up, take the count, it's a standing count, mm -hmm. and you continue and you win a round. Yeah. It's very possible. Mm -hmm. But uh, how you see the officiating being done, it's a bit different. 
And this also, I think, we needed to address it because during our technical meeting, we raised an issue about the judges because the judges that were doing duty for the Olympic qualifiers yes. are all not from Africa. Uh -huh. They're from outside. Yes. Now, these guys come from different countries and those countries have different boxing culture. Oh, okay. So, yes. we have not had a time as Africans yeah. to be told what is it that these judges are going to be looking for. In that you understand also yeah, we need to understand where the, the judges, judges are, are coming judges from. So that yeah. when you go to the ring, you know yes. exactly what you need to do mm -hmm. to win about. Yes. So that opportunity has not been there. And I think it's something that I would recommend maybe to the boxing unit of uh, International Olympic Committee to yeah. take into consideration mm -hmm. when they are hosting this continental, continental championship mm -hmm. and they are not use the, using the judges from that continent. Yes. They see how they can have a session with the teams mm -hmm. and uh, explain to the teams what is it that the judges will be looking for. Yes. It makes it a bit easier for the coaches and the technical team to handle the boxers mm -hmm. because you know what is it that the judges are going to be looking for. Yes. But when you you don't know what the judges are looking for, you get so much frustrated because yeah. uh, sometimes boxing is uh, very dynamic. You yeah. we can watch one fight together and we just uh, disagree who has won. Who has won that fight? Yeah, Actually, it's unlike it's football true. where you yeah. see a goal has been scored. So yeah. you know this team has scored, so the team has won. And th there was also a contention when it came to Elizabeth and Diego and she lost on points mm -hmm. because many people are saying that. Uh, she actually had a very good bout and yeah. the way she lost it uh, through that split decision mm. was not very accurate from the judges. Yes, uh, mm. it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, those are some of the challenges that yeah. we encounter uh, because again I said boxing is subjective. Yeah. Uh, sometimes uh, you think your boxer is doing so well yeah. but when it comes to the judges mm -hmm. they seem to be maybe scoring mm. for, one, for one, one. one box and not mm. the other. Yeah. So sometimes uh, we have that disagreement. Even the case I'm telling you about Mugunda, I even yes. sent a video uh, yes. To the guy in charge of boxing in the uh, boxing unit, yeah. telling him, I don't understand how there was no count mm -hmm. in this bout. So you could see, he, re he replied to me after two days, yeah. and he told me, Did the right boxer won? Did the right boxer well, win? He asked you a question. Yes, yeah, instead of answering what I asked. Yeah. So I, I was telling him, I'll send you the whole fight, but I'm not sure the right boxer won. Yes. Because I'm thinking from my observation in yes. this one round, the third round, this fight should have been stopped yes. because the guy should have g been given three starting counts, mm -hmm. which uh, if that happens, the fight comes to an end. But that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Again, there's also an issue which uh, maybe the boxing unit need to look into or maybe for the future. Yes. Because uh, in some of the weight categories, you know, the Olympic weights are very different to the IBA weights. Uh -huh. uh, IBA weights for men, we have 13. Mm -hmm. For women, we have 12. But now for Olympics, for men, we have seven. For women, we have six. Mm -hmm. Even though I have been told reliably that going forward in the 2028 Olympic Games, they want to increase the number of women so that we have 7-7. Seven, seven. Okay. Uh, for men, unfortunately, they have reduced reducing the weight categories for men yes. to increase those for women mm -hmm. so that we have gender parity, so well. which I don't think is the best way to do it. Yes. So, but the point I wanted to tell you whereby, in some of the weight category, the weight difference is so yes. big. Uh -huh. So you find like from featherweight, mm. the next weight is lightweight, lightweight, which is, featherweight is 57 kgs. Mm -hmm. Uh, lightweight is 63.5, oh, yes. so there's yeah. about 6.5 kgs yes, different. Yeah. Then you come to, they removed welterweight, which was about 66 kgs for men, mm -hmm. and they also removed 75, for they, heavyweight. <laughs> which is middleweight. Middle then yeah. they brought in light middleweight, which is 71. Mm -hmm. So the next weight from 71, yes. you either go to 80, wow. which is light heavyweight. Yes. So you see now you've killed middleweight, yeah. and then now the guys who are in middleweight, which is 75, they have to decide whether to go to 71 or to go to 80. Yeah. But you see now, you have this person who was fighting at 71. Uh, if he's having to go to light, to light heavyweight, he's fighting with guys who are much stronger. Yes. Because if somebody is at 80, there's a difference of about 9 kgs. Yeah. That's a lot. Wow. And you see now, when somebody has recovered in the morning, you come, you wait in the morning and you fight maybe in the afternoon or in the evening. Mm -hmm. By the time you're fighting, you're going to be about more than 10 kgs heavier yes. than your opponent, yeah. which is not conducive ideally. Yeah. So I think also maybe the boxing unit needs to look at the weight, the weight categories differently so that we don't have weight categories that have a very huge difference yes. in terms of kilograms fighting against each other mm -hmm. or uh, now people having to reduce so much weight so mm -hmm. that they fit somewhere. Because ideally somebody tries to go where they're strong. Yes. So you see now, for instance, if you are, there's a category, ideally lightweight mm -hmm. locally is 60, 60 kgs. Yes. So you have to decide if you are going up to 63.5 or if you are going down to 57. So, yeah. So that decision, mostly somebody will favor going down. So Instead that of you, going up. So you try to sacrifice yourself, you reduce three kgs. Yes. So you, the guy will be fighting in featherweight. When it's time for fighting, you'll be about uh, 63. 
you have, but you see now you're reducing about six kgs yes. in two days or a day, which is, not, which is not easy. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. And like for ke the case we had for Madi Khadija, yes. Khadija is a heavyweight champion of the world, yes. but there's no heavyweight in women boxing. <laughs> so she had to reshed six kgs mm -hmm. to fight in middleweight. Uh -huh. And she, there's, there's a story which is now open in the public domain where she, she was just taking breakfast alone uh -huh. for the duration of the game so yes. that she maintains her weight and be able to fight, which is not the ideal situation. But it's what now she's having to go through so that she is able to represent her country. And she has a different story being that uh, last time she had qualified for Tokyo mm -hmm. Olympic Games. And yes. during the COVID period, she, mm -hmm. she got pregnant. Yeah. She was not able to participate. Mm -hmm. So she re she's really fighting to try and go and win a medal for Africa. And we are hopeful maybe this time because she, she has already gotten the ticket. Mm -hmm. Hopefully she gets a medal and Africa gets its first uh, women, women medalist yeah. in the Olympics. Well, that's a tough road to go, but we hope... Uh, we hope the best for her. We are hanging out here with Dan Kankuro as a sports journalist and a media communications director with the Boxing Federation of Kenya. I'm Robert Osoro. Finally, Duncan, before I let you go, we have got to talk about uh, the resumption of the local league that is also coming up. How are the preparations on that one going? Well, it's, it's so tricky for us uh -huh. because uh, ideally we should have had our first leg of the league happening beginning of September, yeah. but unfortunately that's the time when now we had to do the uh, Olympic qualifier yes. and we also had to go to Cuba. Mm -hmm. So that's the, ti the time we are supposed to have started our league and now we are trying to see how we need now to change our calendar to be able to accommodate the, other le the le leg that was supposed to have played yes. early September. Again we have another problem because uh, IBA has just announced uh, a new tournament that is coming up Mm -hmm. It's called Nelson Mandela Cup, uh -huh, yes. which is happening in South Africa, yeah. I think from September 9th. Mm -hmm. uh, again, now it's, that one is also going to disrupt our program. Because our boxers have to go to South Africa. Yes, and yeah. uh, at the same time where mm -hmm. when that tournament will be happening, mm -hmm. we are going to be having our electoral congress for mm -hmm. Africa, where we need to go and uh, elect yes. the president of uh, Africa Boxing Confederation. Mm -hmm. So it's a, there's a bit of a challenge there, and I know the... Boxing Executive Committee of uh, BFK is going to sit yes. uh, maybe in the next two, three days and uh, make a decision on mm -hmm. what to do yes. about the league because the international calendar mm -hmm. seems to be very busy yeah. that we are unable to activate the local, the local league. Although I know the county leagues are going on, yes. but the national league is the one that has suffered because of the international assignments. Yes. But uh, I think we are going to have a decision maybe in the next, uh, within the next one week yeah. where we are going to make a decision on how, how to to go ahead with the league. Again <laughs> now, if we go for the tournament in uh, South Africa, South Africa Durban, yeah. uh, it means October is almost spent. Uh -huh, now yes. we are left with November. November. So I think uh, BFK executive has a decision to make yes. whether we just organize some tournaments mm -hmm. to, keep, uh, to keep the boxers busy mm -hmm. or whether to see if we can do less leg than we do. Because normally we do five legs of the league. Yeah. Uh, we see how we can try to fit them in between the period that we have, which is now November, December. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you are able to do five legs. I don't think you can be able to do a whole league yes. within two months. two months. So it will be a very short period. So I think uh, a decision will be made. Mm -hmm. And when that decision is made, I'll be able to communicate to you mm -hmm. and the world. Well, that's where we leave it, Duncan. Thank you for coming here on the Dutch line. Let's go for a short commercial break. Let's enjoy some Champions League, Europa League highlights. When we come back, we'll be discussing the fans on